Well, to start the address, standing up here now, I really have to let you know that this moment seems pretty surreal. And I, I think back to the beginning of my scouting and just, I, I picture a little 11 year old boy with lots of energy. And I mean lots of energy. If you can ask my mom and dad about that. But it was truthfully, it was just a kid who had just gotten involved in scouting and he wasn't really sure what to expect. He had no idea what orienteering was or how to perform a water rescue or how to even cook over an open fire, but he was just ready to go outside and camp with his friends. But the great thing was, is that's just fun. Because that's the beauty of scouting. It's not really a one-time thing. It's not, a, it's not a bucket list item that you cross off and say, yeah, I did that once, it was pretty fun, and then move on. No, scouting represents a journey. It's a substantial period of life in which um, little boys are allowed to grow. Boys with no knowledge of camping or the outdoors can transform into young teenagers who've camped out several times and are learning what it means to be responsible citizens and community members, who then transform into young men who are learning what it really means to be a leader, how to respect and treat others in fairness and kindness, how to stand up for those smaller or weaker than you, and how to live in a manner worthy of commendation. This very well describes my journey with scouting. I joined my first troop when I was 11 years old. It was Troop 397 in Gardner, North Carolina. My closest fellow scouts, Mark, Ethan, and I were ready to begin our journey. As we began, we were shown the various basic skills we needed to know, what gear was needed on a camp out, how to work as a patrol, and how to be responsible outdoors. After a year, I gained a rank. But during this time, I also experienced a change. I switched troops to one that was being founded at my church at that time, Troop 613. For me, this was when my journey in scouts really picked up. I made new friends and was pushed to go further through rank advancement. I remember those days very well, and while at the time they were uh, difficult and I didn't really like them, I look back on them with a smile now. You see, I had a scoutmaster, Mr. Tim Taylor, who was very big on letting scouts learn how to do things by themselves. This oftentimes entailed starting over camps at that up late into the night or early into the morning because something wasn't being done right. It got me so frustrated at the time, but later on I realized how important it was for me and my troop to have that influence, as it gave us important knowledge and perseverance for the future. And in addition to learning skills to um, advance in rank, you also are required to serve in a leadership position. While at 613, I had the ability to serve in my favorite position, the SPL, or Senior Patrol Leader. This is essentially the president of a troop. With guidance from my scoutmaster and other leaders, I was able to gain a lot of experience, a lot of experience on how to lead. We had about 35 scouts and 5 patrols. It was my job to work with the other patrol leaders and plan activities for the troop, to look after and know what my guys in the troop were supposed to be doing at different times, and to stand up for them and help solve problems inside the troop. I can honestly say now that that is the best leadership position I've ever held. After my tenure at SPL, I began working more seriously towards my Eagle Scout rank. I was only one rank away now, and I look forward to getting it done. However, during that time, my life outside of Scouts began to change. After much discussion, my family decided it was, closer, it was time to be closer to family and move from North Carolina to Illinois. Now, I had never lived anywhere else in my life, and I had been, friends, um, I had been with my friends and Scoutmates for many years. And at this point, I really began to question whether or not I even wanted to continue to Eagle. I didn't question the original desire I had to gain it, but the emotional part of me had drained knowing that it wouldn't have been completed in North Carolina. However, a couple of weeks before we moved, I was able to go to Philmont, a Boy Scout High Adventure Camp in New Mexico. It was a two-week trip with 10 days on the trail of backpacking over 80 miles. I went with some of my closest friends and scouts and had an absolute blast there. We faced challenges and setbacks during our trip, but were able to work together and overcome them. While we were there, I talked to my friends and leaders about moving and my concerns. However, after spending much time there and receiving encouragement from them, I knew that I had to keep pressing on as far as I had come. So a few weeks after my crew returned, my family moved. It was a very difficult experience for me and my family, but looking back on it now, we can all see the way the Lord was guiding us. After being settled for a little while, my family started pushing me to find a new scout troop. I was still kind of hesitant, hesitant as I didn't have the inspiration I did before, but I followed their leading and started looking. And after visiting several scout troops, I was able to join up with Troop 42 in Marion. My new leaders and scoutmates were very accepting of me and provided with, me with a ton of encouragement and help in getting my evil stuff done. 
Um, I remember talking with Brad and Mr. Weiss and going over paperwork for the umpteenth time, making every sure, and making sure every T was crossed and I was dotted. But they helped me through all of it and made sure that I had everything I needed for my reviews. Now to close, I know I've taken a lot of time, so I'll try and wrap this up now. I just want to share a few of the main things that I have learned with my time with Scouts. First, being loyal. No dispute is worth breaking a friendship over. Hardships will come and go throughout life, but a large part of how you handle them is who you have to help around you to help you. Second, being obedient. A large part of being a good leader um, in person is obedience. You may never experience what it is like to lead a large group of people, but willful compliance is one of the greatest treasures for a good leader. And lastly, being trustworthy. Everything else can really stem out of this point. Be on time. Be true to your word, honestly and lovingly saying what you believe. Speak out, speak out against injustice and stand behind what you say. These things will dictate who you become. As John Wooden once said, be more concerned with your character than your reputation, because your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are.